Thank you. Hello. Um, so we're here to celebrate some extraordinary examples of excellence this evening, which is always very exciting. Um, we are, of course, right now, are we not, at the very edge of an extraordinary period. A, a friend of mine, Patrick Bellew, who runs a firm called Atelier 10, they're amazing environmental engineers, says that right now is the very best possible time to be alive, possibly since the Industrial Revolution, because we are going through the post-Industrial Revolution, and so much technology is being invented, and so much is happening so quickly. And that is an enormous privilege. We face enormous challenges, but at the same time, this, these things, and this thing here, humankind's ability to get out of, out of its mess, you know, well, I think we're here to, to celebrate perhaps the hope that we can. We can just do that. Um, we are also, at the moment, this very week, um, witnessing the passage through the par parliament of this country of the uh, Green Bill, the, um, the Energy Bill. And we're very lucky to have the minister here this evening, uh, Greg Barker, who will talk to us a bit about, about that later on. Um, I, I work a bit with WWF and with the Green Building Council and with another organization called the Great British Refurb, and together we've been uh, campaigning, I think as a voice, a friendly voice of criticism to the government, to, um, to press for targets in the Energy Bill particularly with regard to things like retrofitting of our existing stock and our, our homes. And, and why do we do that? Because actually nothing creates a market for new product like legislation. The moment the government introduces legislation, then manufacturers can say, yes, do you know what? We can see a market there and we can pour money into developing our new products and researching and improving them because we know that in 10 years' time there's going to be somebody there to buy them. Universities can invest in courses, and colleges can invest in the skills to train people up. And generally speaking, I mean, our entire economy can plan for capacity. Skills, education, technology, capacity, these things are, are absolutely depend on legislation and legislative targets. There are two significant dates which have done a huge amount already to spur on the technology industries in the UK in this field. One was the 2016 zero carbon homes target, and the other, of course, is Gordon Brown's 2050 target. And those two dates have revolutionized, for example, construction, my field. I remember five years ago, EcoBuild was three stands at a little exhibition in Earl's Court. Now, it's 900 exhibitors in one of the largest exhibitions on the planet at Excel. Um, and I'm delighted, indeed, that the Ashton Awards have recently uh, honored architectural practices, uh, archetype, for example, um, for the work they're doing in this area. Now, um, targets, legislation, standards, they all rely, of course, on information, on data. And uh, the renewable sector, unfortunately, uh, sustainable construction, green energy, low carbon retrofitting, these are all infant cultures. They've got very little in the way of reliable performance data stretching back over years. Uh, if anything, of course, they're rife with misinformation. We're all used to arguments about the uselessness of wind turbines, um, the fact that domestic wind turbines uh, don't work and don't generate any energy at all, and that photovoltaic panels never, ever recoup the embodied energy to make them, all of which, all of which are absolutely untrue. But nevertheless, the newspapers like to, to tell those stories. But perhaps the biggest myth... The biggest myth of all is the fact that we can do nothing about a sustainable economy, a sustainable future, a more sustainable energy sector, and that we must make for electric cars and the decarbonisation of the grid, whereas, in fact, we have 26 million homes in the UK responsible for about 27% of carbon emissions. You know, we've got the Green Deal coming as part of the energy bill. The Green Deal, thanks in no small measure to... Greg Barker's determination is going to deliver an extraordinary opportunity to retrofit our 26 million homes to an extraordinary standard of low carbon living. Now, we have one hit at this, because if we get this wrong, of course, we have to do it all over again, and it's an entirely pointless exercise. But it is a fantastic opportunity that's presented to us, being presented over the, over the next 10 years. Meantime, of course, we all put too much water in the kettle when we boil it, we all take too many trips to Sainsbury's in our car, we, uh, 
we leave the, the, the wireless router on all night. And at the same time, of course, we applaud those wonderful awards given to third world communities and where free CFL light bulbs are distributed. Um, there is, I, I don't need to point out the sort of the slight hypocrisy in this position. Uh, there is, however, I think a tremendous opportunity and responsibility that we as a Western society face. And that is that we were, of course, the cradle of the Industrial Revolution 200 years ago. And uh, right now, China and India, for example, are racing through what took us 200 years to achieve in 20. So what do we do? Do we stand back? No, we have, I think, a responsibility. We have a, an ethical responsibility to demonstrate what the post-industrial revolution is. I have to say that tonight we've got five awards for UK schemes and ideas and five for international schemes. And it is by no means the case that the UK always leads by example. But I do believe that the one thing the Ashton Awards do do is demonstrate, is demonstrate excellence, demonstrate what it's possible for human beings to do. And in, in the armory of tools and weapons that we have to fight climate change, I think the Ashton Awards do one thing brilliantly, and that is celebrate human change. Thank you.